Most people think that because I'm the principal's daughter, I get special treatment. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. In fact, having my dad as my principal just means I have to be extra good at home as well as at school. I'm not allowed to go out on school nights. All my homework has to be done before dinner, and that includes reports and papers. And I can only be in one extracurricular at a time. Usually, my dad wants me to do things like yearbook club, but I really want to be a cheerleader. He said no, twice. If you thought that was bad, imagine how you would feel if you were a boy that liked me, and then you came to my house only to see your principal there to greet you. Ugh, I can't wait to go to college so I can finally just be me. People will be able to see me for who I really am, not Mr. Larson's daughter, or the principal's pet. Yes, people call me that all the time. When I first started school F high, no one knew that I was related to the militant man who roamed the halls trying to get students and faculty in trouble. The same last name only caught the attention of my peers after my father told me to stand up in the middle of an assembly to show who I was in case anyone needed help around the school. This got a big laugh from my fellow classmates, and that's how I got the nickname Principal's Pet. A typical day at school can start out pretty ordinary for me now that I'm a senior in high school. Just a couple more months, and I'll be off to college in New York. For now, though, I'm still under my dad's wing at home and at school, and he never lets me forget it. No one does. I get to school around 7.40 in the morning. I drive myself to school, typically, because I don't want to be seen with my dad, and also I can leave right after school if I want to. The less time with him, the better. My friends always wait for me in the hallway so we can walk to class together. I have a close group of friends, Taylor, Amber, Jaden, and Tess. Taylor and Amber are fraternal twins, and the daughters of the science teacher, Mrs. Bingle, so they understand the pain I go through nearly all day at school because I'm the principal's kid. Jaden has been our friend for our entire high school days, and Tess joined our group just last year. She moved here from Albuquerque, and we took her under our wing. Her fashion sense is spectacular, which means she'll always make sure we all look good in group photos. My friends are awesome, and they're the only ones I can trust to not make my day hell. We were laughing and having a good time, but just as we rounded the corner to our first period English class, Ryan Powers stopped us in our tracks. Ryan Powers was a jerk. If he thought you were cute, he'd tell everyone you did dirty things to him under the bleachers or in the auditorium. If he hated you, he'd tell everyone that you had a really bad STD or a weird abnormality in order to make people not like you. The worst part of all, he wasn't afraid of my dad. Nope, Ryan Powers' dad was super rich, and he probably slid my dad over $100,000 in the course of Ryan's high school career. That's why Ryan never got in trouble for what he did, and now it seems he's set his sights on me. Hey there, Sasha. How are you this morning? He asked, putting his arm around my shoulders to lead me away from my friends. I looked over my shoulders with a help me look in my eyes, but they all just stood there, astonished as to what was about to happen. Hi, Ryan. I have class. I have to get going. I tried to pull away, but it was no use. His hand got tighter on my arm. I don't think your daddy will be too upset if you're a little bit late. I gulped, hoping this would end soon. If I just shut up now and let him talk, the sooner I could get back to class. I was hoping you would go out with me this Friday on a date. Maybe we could go to the movies. I could take you out to get ice cream. You know, the works. He raised an eyebrow. What do you think? Absolutely, 100% not, I said, pushing his hand off my arm. What? I told you, you don't have to worry about your dad. Come on, Sasha, you know I've liked you for like five years. I scoffed. You like everyone, and besides, it doesn't matter if I go on a date with you or not. You're going to tell everyone that we did things we didn't do. I don't want that on my shoulders. Also, you're just plain mean to everyone. I would never date a guy who's such a jerk. He looked at me confused. I would never speak ill of you, my darling. You are gorgeous, and I don't know what you've heard, but I never talk bad about anyone. Just looking at Ryan, you would believe him wholeheartedly. He looked like America's sweetheart, a purebred, blonde hair, blue-eyed boy. Except he was not a good person. You could almost see it in his eyes if you stared too long. I couldn't help but chuckle. Get a life, Ryan, I said, before turning and heading back to my class just in time for the bell to ring. As the door was shutting to my classroom, I heard Ryan say, matter-of-factly, You're going on a date with me Friday. I sat down in my chair and was just about to tell Jaden what happened when the teacher came in. I ended up writing her a note instead. It said, Jaden, you will not believe what just happened to me in the hallway. Ryan asked me on a date. No, he actually told me we were going on a date. What do I do? Sasha. 
I passed the note over to Jaden, and as soon as she was done reading it, I knew, because she let out a gasp that could mean nothing else. I saw her furiously scribbling. We were supposed to be taking notes for our class, but I knew she was begging me for more information, and probably passing my note to the others in the group. When she passed her note to me, I opened it quickly. Sasha, you cannot be serious right now. Tell your dad, tell your mom, scream it from the rooftop that you're not going on a date with that loser. Jaden, I really wasn't sure how I was going to pull this off, but an idea was coming to me. You would think after that, today couldn't really get much worse. However, as soon as I was heading to my second class, I got called to the principal's office. That's right. My dad called me over the loudspeaker for everyone to hear, except he didn't say my name. Of course not. He said, and I quote, My daughter needs to come to the office now. Since I'm his only daughter and his only child in the school, I knew he meant me. My face turned red as all eyes swung over to look at me in the hallway. Everyone was curious to know what I did, unless Ryan already told them we were making out before first period, which I'm almost sure he had. I hope this had nothing to do with him. To say I was a little scared would be an understatement. I never had to go to the principal's office for anything other than to ask my dad a question for a teacher or, you know, just to say hi because I'm super close with my dad. I've never been in the principal's office because I've never gotten in trouble. And I had no idea what I did now. I was sure I would find out soon. The next class I had was math, so I didn't really mind missing it. On my way to the office, I tried to avoid the hall where the popular kids hang out. I didn't want anyone to see me heading that way. They may ask too many questions or laugh and call me principal's pet, PP for short. When I got to the office, my dad ushered me inside and shut the door. He even locked the deadbolt tight. He sat down on the chair and offered me the seat across from him. Before he could even say hello, I asked, what am I doing here? My dad chuckled a little and said, I've got a proposition for you, Sasha. Ryan's father called me earlier today, and he said that his company would donate $10,000 to start building the new gym if my daughter went out on a date with his son this Friday night. He paused as the words he said sank into my mind. Aren't you excited that the new gym is going to finally get built? I looked at him in total shock and disgust. You're going to force me to go on a date with Ryan Powers? I asked, nearly yelling. My father leaned back in his chair like only the best villains do and said, Look, Sasha, $10,000, it's a lot of money. Derek Powers is a strong, powerful man that can do a lot to you and me. I'd suggest you go on this date and you smile the entire time. Now, get out of my office. I don't want to hear another word about this. I stood up to leave and my dad, who always has to have the last word, said, Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I couldn't believe he talked to me like that. Actually, yes, I could. This day could not get any worse. Looking back now, I probably shouldn't have said that. Leaving the office, I took a turn down one of the creepiest hallways in the school. I don't know what it is about this hallway, but it's always dark. The band room and chemistry lab are down that hallway, but but there's always something even cooler. The janitor's office at the end of the hall. The one that only I have the key to. I stole it off my dad's key ring a long time ago, and my friends and I have been using it as our hangout when we want to skip class for as long as I can remember. All I had to do was send a quick text to my friends, and they'd meet me here if they could. I pushed the door open to the janitor's closet and was happy to see that our things were still where we'd last put them. Some chairs from the choir room, a stack of books from the library that are banned, a few snacks from the teacher's lounge that we confiscated one day during an assembly— It was our own little hideout, and we could only go there when class was in, or else risk being seen. I texted Jaden and the twins, but only Taylor, Tess, and Jaden were able to sneak out of class. Amber was taking a test that she'd been studying for for four weeks, so we didn't want to disturb her. Now, you may be asking, wasn't I worried about being caught or getting into trouble for skipping class? The short answer is no. The long answer is that I've been doing it for so long that I know which classes the teachers won't care or pay attention to how long you're gone, and even if I do get in trouble, all I have to do is say I was talking to my dad and the teacher will shut up. I kind of liked having that power. Soon after the text, I heard our signature knock on the door. Three short taps and two long ones. I tapped back on the door to show that I was there, and ready to flip the lights on as soon as whoever was on the other side entered. We kept the light off when the door was open so no one would suspect anything weird going on down the creepy hallway. The door opened and in stepped Jaden. I could tell she was dying to know what I had said about Ryan in the principal's office. I wouldn't tell her until the others were here. 
When the other girls arrived, there was about a millisecond of silence before everyone started talking at once. Tess finally said, guys, stop, one at a time or we're going to get caught. Jaden looked at me. Sasha needs to go first. She has big news. Everyone stared me down. I gulped while sweat dripped down my back. Ryan asked me out. Everyone said, ew, at the same time, even Jaden. I nodded in agreement. I know, but that's not even the worst part. I got pulled into my dad's office. He's making me go out with him on Friday for 10 grand. The room was silent. Then Jaden shrugged and said, well, I mean, last time it was five grand, so you're getting more expensive. She nudged my shoulder to show she was joking. What am I going to do? I groaned. There's only one thing you can do, Taylor interjected. Go on a date with him and make him so miserable he'll be begging his dad to pay your dad $50,000 to keep you away from him. I smiled. I like this idea. As much as I've said I don't like being the principal's daughter, it does come with its own perks. Like, of course, my secret hideaway and the fact that I knew where all of the security cameras were. I also had access to every single key to open any door that I wanted, including the school itself. My dad always put the keys for the school in the lockbox of his closet, and after school, I was planning to take them to finally put Ryan Powers in his place. The rest of the school day went by easily. My friends and I gathered several girls together to tell them about the plan. We'd taken some time at lunch to come back together and make flyers. We needed as many people in on this as possible. It wasn't going to be easy, and we would need a lot of help. Somehow, I was pretty sure that all of the girls we recruited would help and even recruit more. When I got home, I finished all of my homework and made a show of taking a shower to get ready for bed. What my parents didn't know was that earlier that day, I had asked Ryan Powers to meet me back at the school after dark. I told him that I wanted him to prove to me that he really liked me, and he could do that by meeting me at the school. It didn't take much convincing, because I'm pretty sure Ryan thought we were at least going to make out, but I also invited more than a hundred girls from the school to come, and when Ryan and I walked into the auditorium, he was going to get a huge surprise. The only thing is, I now needed to wait until my parents fell asleep so I could break into my dad's lockbox. I was going to take the keys after school, but my dad had meetings and was late. He didn't get home until around 6.30, and he kept lingering in his room. It's almost like he suspected I was up to something. My parents were usually in bed around 9 p.m., but tonight The Bachelor was on, and it's my mom's favorite show. I totally forgot what day it was, so I had to endure the hour-long wait before my parents finally clicked off the television and nestled into bed. It took another 20 minutes before I finally heard my dad snore echoing through the hallway, and I gave it another five minutes before I army crawled into their closet. I knew where the lockbox was, but the key was a mystery. I turned on my cell phone flashlight to search, finding pens, change, other random stuff sitting around on the dresser and the closet, but no key. I looked over at the lockbox, and you would never guess my luck. The key was still inside. I twisted it open as fast as I could and pulled out the huge ring of keys. They clanged together like cymbals, and I was sure I had woken both my parents up. They stirred a little. But after a second, I was able to shove the keys into my pocket of my hoodie and muffle the sound. I snuck back out of their room and raced down the stairs. I had to get to the school by 11 or people would start leaving. I texted Jaden that I was on my way in hopes that she could tell everyone that I'd be there soon. I had also texted Ryan that I was on the way and that I'd meet him by the auditorium doors. Hopefully he didn't see anyone going in and no one clued him in on what was really going to happen. We had passed out the flyers during the school day, but we'd asked that people only give them to other girls and to keep everything a secret. You know how high schools are, though. No one ever keeps things to themselves. I pulled up to the school, and like I had hoped, people had parked on the other side so that Ryan wouldn't see them as he pulled in. We went to a huge school, and it was impossible to see the parking lot on the other side. Now all I had to do was to run in and make sure everything was all right before Ryan showed up. I texted Ryan to see when he would be coming. He said he'd be there in five minutes. Perfect. I ran inside, and to my amazement, when I opened the doors, there was not 100 people staring back at me. The entire auditorium was filled up with girls, many holding signs that said a word that Ryan had called them, others wearing shirts that had the words written on them. Tessa's camera was rolling. My mouth was agape. I had never seen this many people in one room. Surprisingly, everyone was silent. At that moment, I decided to break the silence and tell everyone how happy I was that they came and that I needed them to be ready because Ryan was coming soon. The lights went out as soon as we saw headlights pull down the road. 
It was nearly 11.30 p.m., and there weren't a lot of people driving down the road at this hour, so we knew it had to be him. Sure enough, he pulled into the parking lot and parked right next to the door. He looked like he was freshly showered and ready to hook up with a cute girl. Little did he know, as soon as he opened the auditorium doors, the lights would go on, and over 600 girls would shout the ugly words that he had called them at the same time. Some threw things at him. We didn't tell them to do this. And some even shot Nerf gun darts at him. We didn't tell them to do this either, but I wish I would have thought of that. The smile that was on Ryan's face disappeared as soon as he saw everyone in that room. He turned to leave, but Amber and Jaden stood in the doorway with their arms crossed. I stood in front of Ryan, staring at him. One thousand people behind me. Every single girl in this room is someone who you have hurt personally. The fact that we were able to rally this many females in one space should show you how much your words and actions destroy people. You better believe none of us will ever go out with you. I had more to say, but as soon as I was about to begin, the alarm went off and red lights started flashing throughout the auditorium. We all covered our ears, including Ryan and the door blockers. No less than five minutes later, the cops were at the door. And so was my dad. Crap, I thought to myself as I saw his beady eyes staring at us all through the glass. The doors opened and my dad ran into the room. What the hell is going on here? He asked, looking at me then at Ryan and everyone else in the room. 